So I read 13 books in 23 minutes. And today I want to talk to you about this book right here. Welcome back to 23 Minute Reads with me, Maya D. This is kind of like my accountability vlog because in these videos, I share with you my takeaways from my current reading, which right now is book 13. Book 13, yeah. Um, Joe Myers Brown and the Audacious Hope of the Black Ballerina. Book 13 of my 23 to 23 challenge where I'm reading 23 minutes per day, every day as an action of self-love, as an investment to myself, and as a way of providing myself with some consistency in an ever-changing world. Hoping that you will join me along in this journey by leaving some comments down there in that comment section and even offering some book suggestions so that this is an actual dialogue, a back and forth, having in mind that while I have several decades of experience as a dancer, as an educator, and a curriculum writer, I am not the know-all be-all for this book right here. I'm simply providing a space for dialogue. Well, this week I got to look at my notes. I read pages 236 through the end, and here are my three takeaways. Takeaway number one is global xenophobia. One of the things that I learned um, and that we are, we experience in reading this book is how much Philodanko, you'll also hear me call him Danko, um, has traveled, travels around the world performing. Another thing worth mentioning, um, is how JB handles racism and racist situations, which seems like, I mean, even by the title, you're like, oh, well, this book must be about Joe Myers Brown and her perseverance through um, wanting and becoming a ballerina during a time and in a, in a place where that idea was not very welcome, but there's still more, and that's what makes this a great book. More than once, BDG, Brenda Dixon Gottschill, comments on the way that JB recounts these negative situations. And I feel like the way that JB recounts them allows the listener to understand the incident, but it's almost in this like data kind of way where it informs, but not so much attention that we are stuck in the pain of the situation and unable to move forward. And what I gather from that and what I'm reminded of is how we tell stories is important. And that's because not only do stories share the information, right? The, the historical space of it. They also share values and beliefs and they share them across time and space. A story can travel further and longer than this physical body can, right? So that's just really kind of powerful when you, when you think about it. In the book, we find these words, American style anti-black racism now erased from public displays on home turf can flourish in a frontier town in Eastern Europe, but that is the reality. And this is the new global xenophobia that goes hand in hand with the under the radar of our own post-racist millennial moments in the United States." End quote. Now to offer some context, the book covers JB's early life up to around the year 2010 when the book was published. BDG's words, that quote, that previous quote, are in response to Philodenko's 2001 Poland tour. It must be noted that uh, while the company was received well, their audiences were both respectful and supportive, it was a different kind of situation when the dancers were walking through the streets. Um, dancers were called uh, monkeys and animals in English as they walked through the streets. So navigating the streets and the stage were a different experience. JB remarked, and I quote, that these actions are often fueled by film and television, end quote. So film and television are both methods of storytelling. So again, how we tell stories is important. 
but not just the stories that we tell others. It's equally important the stories that we tell ourselves because we fuel our actions, right? Um, you can only really control yourself. In a beautiful and reflective moment, Zane Booker acknowledges that at times he has been guilty of listening for things that support an idea that he has rather an opinion that he has rather than this active listening that allows you to really understand um, what the person is trying to communicate with you, which kind of aligns with the statement around implicit bias that we covered um, and we talked about in uh, the book Dance and Belonging. So make sure you take a look at those videos if you haven't read that amazing, amazing book yet. Booker goes on to say, and I quote, everybody has some kind of prejudice connected to homophobia, racism, and class, something or another. So my effort has been to identify it in myself, end quote. This is an amazing reminder that we are perfectly imperfect humans that have the ability to question the stories that we are telling ourselves and that we communicate to others. And in the ideal world, work towards decreasing the spread of these phobias. Hmm. Takeaway number two is cliche free. The critical, oh, let me try that again. <laughs> the critical gaze, cultural contexting, community voices section of chapter five examines reviews written about um, Philodenko, Danko's performances. And I feel that writing a review in general is a challenging job. Just my opinion. So feel free to drop your ideas in that comment section. Um, one, because the words that you write have the power to affect the present and the future. What do I mean by that? So what you write might call people to come to that show in the present or not come to that show, not support that show in the present. But what you write also uh, becomes dance history in the future. So it, it affects the, pet, the present and the future. And the second is because what we see and what we don't see is influenced by our own personal history, including our preferences, our beliefs, and our values. BDG comments on a review written by Jennifer Dunning. And I quote, as a whole, are jargon free, cliche free, and stereotype free, end quote. And you might be thinking, but cliches help make it interesting and like all of those things. My response would be, well, I guess it depends on how you define interesting. As a practitioner, um, I'm interested in knowing more than there was passionate dancing with provocative, heart-stopping moves. That's a that's a thing. I just I I just want to know about the subtext. I want to know um, other portions of it. I want to know how the work adds to or reiterates statements, um, ideas, and things like that. So I'm looking for some more. That's Yeah, so that's how I define interesting. BDG says, and I quote, we are treated to one of the rare occasions when a reviewer says more about the quality and context of a dance than a few flashy phrases. BDG also mentions that Dunning um, had a, a level of familiarity with the company because of engagement with the company via interviews and so forth. I believe that this previous engagement, these additional touch points with the company created a personal history that allowed her to write a deeper description of the work. Takeaway number three. <laughs> On May 10th, 2010, JB Joan Myers Brown was awarded the Philadelphia Award. This is a prestigious award. And based on the context of this book, it's like, of course you would have got it, right? But I guess that's what made this next line um, so interesting or stand out to me. Um, we found it in an epilogue and I quote, Yeah, Mary, 
I'm never going to win that. I'm not really important enough, but thanks for thinking that much of me. These words, uh, Mary, let's talk about Mary. Who's, who's the Mary? Mary was actually one of JB's friends who since 1985 had nominated uh, JB for this award every year. And it wasn't until 2010 that she finally gets it. Like she gets the award, she's acknowledged. And I guess what I, what I not grapple with, I guess the beauty, the struggle, the all of those things that you wanna interject right there is that we see her perseverance, we see her focus, we see her determination. People saw it, right? And just because this person over here doesn't see it doesn't mean that it's impactful. And we have to remember that the work that we do is important. And if you keep doing the thing, even eventually the thing gonna get done. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I guess that's what I got. I guess that's what I got from that. I know that's what I got from that. Let me, let me affirm that. I know that's what I got from that. The work that we do is enough. That's why we do it. This book and journey are one of perseverance, determination, care, and hope. I'm happy that JB was, a, was determined enough to persevere, to care enough to teach this next generation. And that care bled into all of the future generations like you, like, oh, well, I don't know, like you. Like, you might be a different age than me, but a number of us, right? Um, that care for us, this future generation, was enough to instill a level of hope in us. And that's a beautiful thing. But what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. You can also drop a book emoji so that I know that you're here with me. Or you could drop the su a suggestion, another title for me to read. Um, my name is Maya D. <laughs> this has been 23 Minute Reads. Uh, thank you for staying to the end. Remember to like and subscribe if you like this video or found it interesting in any other way. And stay blessed, spread a good word, and I'll see you again soon.